section 3.1, Statements and Logical Connectives. Uh, we're going to give you a brief overview about how logic works, what logic will look like, and the symbols that are going to be used in this chapter. There's actually a really fun um, overview of the creation of logic in the textbook on page 91 if you want to read about that, but I will not cover the history of logic uh, in this lecture. So first thing is just an overview of logic in the English language. So first thing is going to be the word connectives. Connectives we use every day when we talk, and connectives are going to use uh, be the words such as and, or, if, then. Basically, in my opinion, a connective is just going to bring two thoughts together, um, and you use these words all the time. Exclusive or. Uh, in an exclusive or, you're bringing two thoughts together with the word or between them. So when you talk about something being an exclusive or, you want one or the other, but you don't want both of them to occur. So for example, I want to wear a red or a blue shirt. If you don't want to wear a red and a blue shirt, then that would be an exclusive or. You don't want them to simultaneously occur. Inclusive or means that you could have one or the other or both. So I usually um, talk about food if I ordered like a fajita platter for dinner and I said I wanted chicken or beef fajitas. I would be satisfied with just chicken or just beef or the combination platter. A statement is just going to be a sentence that can be judged either true or false. So for example, um, Hawaii is one of the states in the United States. That could be a statement that you could prove either true or false. Um, you don't typically want to include opinions here, so you wouldn't want to say like Hawaii is the best state of the United States because you wouldn't be able to prove that true or false. So something that can be found true or false would be considered a statement. Often when we look it up and confirm whether something is true or false, that is called assigning a truth value. Um, in this section, we're going to deal with simple statements and compound statements. A simple statement is a sentence that conveys only one idea and can be given a truth value. So again, Hawaii is a state in the United States. Simple statement. A compound statement is going to include multiple thoughts, and they'll typically use a symbol between the two thoughts. So Hawaii is a state in the United States, and Hawaii has the largest population of all the states. That would be considered a compound statement. So um, Hawaii being a state would be true. Hawaii having the heart largest population would be false. So you are able to assign two truth values to a compound statement. Negation of a statement. A negation of a statement is going to change a statement uh, to its opposite meaning. So for example, Hawaii is a state in the United States. The negation of that would be Hawaii is not a state in the United States. So the negation of a false statement will always be true. The negation of a true statement will always be false. Quantifiers. Quantifiers are going to involve quantities. So it's going to use words such as all, none, no, some, etc. You have to really be careful when you're doing the negation of a quantifier because it's not going to be as simple as just changing it to the opposite instead of, um, you have to also deal with changing the quantity when you negate something. So let's take a look at what that means. So for example, if your statement um, uses the word all, when you go to negate it, 
not only are you going to have to use the word not, you're also going to have to change the quantity from all to some. So um, instead of, so let's just say all lakes are freshwater lakes. If I went to go change that, I would say some lakes are not freshwater. Um, if I said none are, so none of the desserts are cooked. If I went to negate it, I would have to change it to some are cooked. So notice the negative goes away and the quantity changes. Um, some of my friends are blonde. So I need to change it to a negative and then I need to change the quantity. None of my friends are blonde. Um, some of my dogs are not trained. The negation of that would be all of my dogs are trained. This table just kind of gives you an overview about how to negate quantified statements. So notice if you have a general all, you need to switch that to a some are not. And then you can also go the opposite way. If you are starting with some are not, then you would go back to all are. And then if you started with some are, then you would go to none are and vice versa. None are would turn into some are. So change it from a positive to a negative and then change the quantity. So we can look at a couple examples of this. Um, let's write the negation of the statement, some books are novels. So our negation, we would have to change instead of some, we would have to go with none. And instead of are, we'd have to go with are not. So probably the easiest negation would be no books are novels. Write the negation. All coins have the image of George Washington. So we know this is false, but the negation would be some coins do not have the image of George Washington. So statements consisting of two or more simple statements are going to be called compound statements. And when we start combining compound statements, we're going to use what's called connectives. The most common connectives you're going to use to combine two statements are and, or, if, then, and if and only if. And just so you know, um, there is a shorthand for if and only if. They'll often write it as IFF. So if you're ever um, taking notes on your homework, you want to write it a little shorter. IFF stands for if and only if. So um, the most common compound statement you can hit is called the negation. So um, the symbol that we're going to use to represent the negation is the little tilde symbol. So the little squiggle sign. And whenever you see that squiggle, you're going to read that symbol as not. So if we were trying to write the negation of P, we would do a little tilde and then the letter P. Um, next, you have your and statements. And statements are also called conjunctions. Whenever you're dealing with a conjunction, they're going to use what looks like an upside down V. Um, an easy way to remember that that's and is notice it kind of looks just like the A but without the bar in there. So if you ever see an upside down V, that is going to be read as and. So the conjunction of P and Q would be the P with the upside down V, Q. Um, you aren't gonna say upside down P, you're gonna read it just as like you're saying the word and. So you'd say P and Q. Um, you can also use other words besides and to express a conjunction. Other words you can encounter would be the words um, but, however, and nevertheless. So if you see any of those, those would all can be translated to the word and. Uh, so let's look at an example. Write the following conjunction in symbolic form. Kanye West is not on tour but Kanye West is recording a new CD. So notice um, the word not. Whenever you see the word not, that is going to be used with the negation symbol. Okay, so let's say the fact that Kanye West is on tour. Let's call that T for tour. So if Kanye West goes on tour, we'll say T. 
but Kanye West is not going to go on tour. So we need to negate this. And so we'll do the negation of T. Then you have your comma. So they're telling you, hey, your second part of the statement is coming. And they use the word but. So that is an indication of and. Even though they don't say the word and, we're going to translate it as and. So we need to use the and symbol, which looks like the upside down V. Now we need our second statement. Kanye West is recording a new CD. So we'll say since he's recording, we'll call that R. Um, he is not, it, it didn't use the not statement with the recording, so we do not need to negate that. So you have just written um, this statement in symbolic form. Okay, another type of um, logical connective we can have is the disjunction. The disjunction is going to look like a capital V, and whenever you see that, you're going to call the, read the word or. In this class, we are going to always use an inclusive or. So again, that's the fajita example. You can have just chicken, or you can have just beef, or you can have both. So the inclusive both is going to be allowed. So whenever you see the V between your two statements, that is going to be the or. So I would read this as P or Q. Let's look at an example of a disjunction. Statement P is that Camilla will take chemistry. Statement Q is that Camilla will take French. So we want to write the symbolic form. Camilla will take chemistry or Camilla will take French. So because they used the word or, we need to use the upside down V symbol. So you would do P or Q. How about Camilla will not take chemistry or Camilla will not take French. So notice that the negation keeps popping up, so you need to use your tilde symbol. So we need a not P or a not Q. So compound statements. When a compound statement contains more than one connective, a comma will be used to indicate which simple statements are to be grouped together. When we write the compound statement symbolically, the simple statements on the same side of the comma will need to be grouped together in parentheses. And this tends to be when people start to get a little nervous is when the parentheses need to come into play. So let's look at an example. Statement P is that dinner includes soup. Statement Q is that dinner includes salad. And statement R is that dinner includes the vegetable of the day. So let's write in symbolic form. Dinner includes soup, comma, and salad or vegetable of the day. So notice the comma. The comma is important. So dinner includes soup is going to be on one side of the connective. And then salad or vegetable of the day is going to be on the other side of the connective. The connective that splits you into two sides is going to be the and symbol. And I only knew that because of where the comma was placed. Okay, so I'm going to use my and symbol, which looks like my upside down V. On the left of the and symbol, I just need the statement that dinner includes soup. Well, that's just statement P. So nothing else is going to go on the left hand side. Then on the right hand side, I have a group of items, salad, or vegetable of the day. Because there's more than one on that side, I need to use parentheses around that statement. So I'm gonna put my parentheses in. Dinner can include salad would be statement Q. Dinner can include vegetable of the day would be statement R. And then I'm using the connective or between those two statements, which looks like the V symbol. Let's try another one, same statements. Soup, salad, vegetable of the day. So dinner includes soup and salad, comma, or vegetable of the day. So notice the comma. So the dinner includes soup and salad needs to go in parentheses on the left. Then we have our connective or that's going to go in the middle, and then vegetable of the day will go on the right. So let's put our connective or in the middle. Dinner includes soup and salad is going to go on the left in parentheses. So soup is P, salad is Q, 
The connective and looks like the upside down V. And then on the right hand side, I need the vegetable of the day. Vegetable of the day is R. So you have to be a little bit careful when those commas start getting put into play. We'll do one more um, just to make sure we've got the idea. So statement P, the house is for sale. Statement Q, we can afford to buy the house. Write the symbolic statement in words. So no, notice they've given you statement P. They have the upside down V, which remember is and. And then they have the negation, which remember is not. And then they have statement Q. So we need P and not Q. So if you were going to write that as a sentence, it would say the house is for sale and we cannot afford to buy the house. Same example, different symbolic. So we have the negation in front of the P, so that is gonna be not P. We have the symbol that looks like a V, that is the or symbol. And then we have the negation in front of the Q, so that is gonna be not Q. So if you applied the statements that they've given you above, you would say, the house is not for sale, or we cannot afford to buy the house. Again, another example. Notice this time you have the parentheses involved. So whenever you get your parentheses involved, you need to apply something to the entire group. So notice that the negation is being applied to the entire group. Inside the group, you have P and Q. So you want the negation of P and Q. So the way you read a negation for an entire statement is you would start off with, it is false that, and then you say what's in the parentheses. The house is for sale and we can't afford to buy the house. So if they ever start you with, it is false that, it is being applied to the entire phrase that comes after that statement. Okay, next type of connective is the if-then statement. The if-then is called the conditional statement, and it is denoted with an arrow that points to the right. The item that comes in front of the arrow is called the antecedent. The item that comes after the arrow is called the consequent. Let's say statement P is the portrait is a pastel. Statement Q is the portrait is by Beth Anderson. So write the statement symbolically. If the portrait is a pastel, then the portrait is by Beth Anderson. So the statement being pastel is P. The portrait being by Beth Anderson is Q. So we want if P, then Q. Symbolically, that would look like a P arrow, a Q. If the portrait is by Beth Anderson, then the portrait is not a pastel. So notice the not, you're gonna need a negation symbol in there. So they're doing if statement Q, then not statement P. Symbolically, that would look like a Q arrow tilde P. It is false that. So notice that phrase, it is false that, is a negation of an entire expression. So you need to put what comes next in parentheses. It is false that if the portrait is by Beth Anderson, then the portrait is a pastel. So we're gonna need our negation for it is false that. Then we need our parentheses. Um, if the portrait is by Beth Anderson, so that would be statement Q, then, if then is going to be your arrow, the portrait is a pastel, that would be statement P. So symbolically, you would have negation, parentheses, Q, arrow, P. The last type of connective that we're going to talk about is the biconditional. The biconditional is symbolized with a double-sided arrow, one that points to both the right and the left, and then it is read if and only if, and again, you can shorten if and only if with IFF. And so if you ever see P double arrow Q, you would read P 
if and only if Q. So let's say statement P is that Alex plays goalie on the lacrosse team. Statement Q is the Huskies win the championship cup. If you see P if and only if Q and you were asked to translate that into a sentence, it would say Alex plays goalie on the lacrosse team if and only if the Huskies win the Champions Cup. Let's look at this expression. You have Q if and only if not P. So the Huskies win the Champions Cup if and only if Alex does not play goalie. Um, again, notice the set of parentheses here. We have a negation in the front. We had a set of parentheses, P if and only if not Q. So if you were going to translate that, you would start with the generic it is false that to include the negation of the entire phrase. It is false that Alex plays goalie on the lacrosse team if and only if the Huskies do not win the Champions Cup. This last slide is just an overview of all the symbols we have learned. So your negation is going to be your tilde. It will be read as not. Your conjunction looks like an upside down V and is the meaning and. Your disjunction looks like a V and is read as or. Conditional looks like an arrow pointing to the right and is read if then. Biconditional is a double-sided arrow and is read if and only if. Good luck on your homework. Let me know if you have questions.